when I do bring in my own lived experience, um, it's, it's done in a way that honors the stories of the other people who have shared um, their journeys with me in this podcast or in this film. I don't want my experience to overtake that, um, overtake their, the space that I'm trying to create for them. Um, and I think because the challenge for me has been it, when I am kind of thinking about if I want to open the world, open my own, open myself to the world and, and what I've been through, I have not had a very privileged life. So in some ways, if you are like, an, you know, you've had an awesome upbringing as a South Asian, you're like, I want to tell the world how awesome South Asians are. And I'm going to, you know, I don't have that story. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that I, for a long time, I just thought, I don't, I don't want to raise my hand and say, oh, here's my shitty life story. <laughs> because I always worry that it would get used to justify the racism that's directed towards people in my community. Um, because my experience in, in, in certain parts of my life, um, because it wasn't positive, it, I, I worried it would just get used to continue to label men and, you know, in, in our community, in, in certain ways and also women in certain ways. And I didn't want to be part of that conversation. Like I didn't want to be, that felt yucky to me and I did not. So I, for a long time, because I couldn't reconcile those things, I didn't, I didn't go there. I didn't talk about it. Being on this podcast, um, which is about the disappearance of a um, woman in, um, in the suburb of Toronto, I shouldn't say suburb, it's a smaller city, um, you know, which is about an hour away from where I grew up. Um, there were so many ways that our lives overlapped and, and sort of there were parallels in our lives that it felt to me actually for transparency and, and to the audience that I wanted to share that this is actually a world I do know something about. And just talking about this is bringing up these feelings and, and these in these moments in my life that I don't want to talk about. Um, so I thought the best way to do that is just to be honest about it. And I also felt, you know, what, what I thought a lot about was how do I tell this story? How do I tell my story without it being used as a stand-in for all Muslim women, because that's a very uncomfortable place to be. I do not represent 1.8 billion Muslims. I don't want to represent 1.8 billion Muslims, right? Like, and and some because there aren't enough representation of Muslim women telling their story. When we do hear somebody, we just kind of they become they're it. You're it. You're our. You know, and that's. That's uncomfortable, but also unfair, right? Because it silences you. Because you know, I can tell you my story, but I don't want that story to to stand in for the experience of all all Muslim women. Because I know that's not true. I know lots of Muslim women, practicing Muslim women, who have a very different relationship with religion, and and they did not grow up with the same kind of experiences. I, so the stories we do hear about Muslim women reliving a, you know, part of trauma in their life, it's always from this place of, this happened to me, it's terrible, Islam's terrible, I wanna have nothing to do with it, that, that's that, right? Like there's, there's, the we've we've allowed there to be space in the media to tell those kinds of stories. But when you're not in that space, when you're like, no, these shitty things happen to me and I think we should talk about it. But I certainly do not think that that means 
this is how we should demonize all Muslims or Islam. I think this is, it's way more complicated than that. And it, that, I, I was not hearing those narratives. Um, I was not hearing those stories about Muslim women from their own perspective or about them. Um, so that was scary because I wanted to see examples of how that was done well, and I couldn't find any. And I was worried, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> I don't know how to voice the experience of myself and of, you know, the lived experience of this woman in my, in my investigation. Um, that is that is not always positive in in her relationship with with male family members. Um, I don't. How do you talk about that? How do you talk about the ways your own community can prop up patriarchy um, while at the same time not wanting to contribute to the racism that exists against them? I struggle with that a lot. And the way I ended up addressing it is just to say that, you know, I don't know, I don't know the right way to do this. So bear with me, I'm trying, but like, and here's what I'm worried about. I ended up, I ended up just saying that. I ended up just saying, I'm worried you're gonna listen to my story and you're gonna think all Muslim women experience the same thing. And please don't do that, because that's not true. Um, and how, silencing that that can be to sort of know that you can't speak for yourself you or or the fear that you can't speak for yourself because we don't give space to complicated stories about communities of color it's always bad or good there's no middle <laughs> um and i wish like i want I don't know if, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm certainly not claiming this is sort of the be all and end all of how to negotiate that as an artist or as a journalist, but I hope it starts the conversation that we, we want to talk about these things in our community, but we also want to acknowledge we're telling you the story in an environment that's extremely hostile towards people in my community. and and sometimes you think, well, maybe it's not the right time. Maybe I'll wait till this like racism that that Muslims have lived through since 9-11 or probably, you know, way before that, but certainly heightened experience of racism after 9-11. Maybe, maybe we just don't tell our stories about violence that we have experienced until that's over. But like, that's never going to be over. This is sort of, this has been part of America, the West, the narrative of, you know, the racism directed towards Muslim communities, especially Muslim men. Um, and I, I don't want, I don't want to have my experience with one Muslim man or, or a couple of Muslim men to stand in for my entire community including people I truly love. Like I have amazing, amazing Muslim friends and family members who would never support any kind of violence against women um, and are very vocal about that. So that, I think that was the hardest thing for me in, this, in telling the story is how do you do that? Should I do that? Do I wanna do that? And am I doing-